I get a lot of questions about the issue of calling and following after God's will. And if you're struggling with not knowing which way to go in life or what you should do or prepare for in the future, I really pray that God will use this video to encourage you and to point you in a proper direction. I want to affirm these things and we will discuss these as we go along. First, God wants to guide you. Second, God has a plan for your life and wants to lead you to fruitfulness. And third, God does not want you to live a desolate life or end up in confusion. There are also some wise principles in searching out the will of God for your life, and I will cover some of these in this message. But before we go any further, I want to pray for you and for discernment if you're going through the process of discerning the Lord's will for your life right now. So let's open in prayer. Father, I pray that everyone who watches this video would first come to know you. Fill them with your spirit. I pray also that those who know you would grow closer to you, would hear your spirit's guidance, and would walk in love and true purpose. I rebuke any lies of the enemy in their life in Jesus' name. And I pray only blessings and truth from the throne of Jesus in their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray this video is a real encouragement to you. I know it's a topic that all of us will go through at some point, but God has created you for a specific purpose, so rejoice! Most basically, that purpose is to know Him, but even more, God has given us each various gifts and talents with which we can glorify Him, which we can use to do something specific that He calls us to. Many determine the level of success in life by how much money you make, or how many people you influence, or how well you do on a test, but I want you to know those guidelines are not legitimate. I, I'm telling you, throw, these, throw those out right now. I believe God has a call in your life that you need to follow, and success is based on your faithfulness and your obedience to Him. My prayer is that you see God on Judgment Day and that He welcomes you regarding every facet of your life with, well done, thou good and thou faithful servant. I mean, pray that for me too. So, amen. So be it. Let that be true. Perhaps God has put something on your heart to do for His kingdom, and you need some confirmation, or perhaps you're at a crossroads in life and you're just feeling lost, or you don't know where to go. You may feel that God is distant, or that He has abandoned you, or that He does not want to guide you in the right direction, but that's not true. In fact, that's often a lie that the enemy will plant in your mind to distract you from the blessed path on which God wants you to travel. So run from that lie. I rebuke that lie in Jesus' name. God wants to guide you to things that will lead you to His glory, your enjoyment of Him, and fruitfulness. First, it's important to know that God wants to guide you. In Isaiah's time, many ignored God or sinned against Him continually, but God, who is so patient with His people, we see that all throughout Scripture. Even today, that's true with us. But He gives them a chance to repent or flee from their sinful ways, turn away from it. And one of the blessings He gives to them, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, Your ears shall hear a word behind you, saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand, or whenever you turn to the left. And we have God's guidance. So let's cherish that. He wants to guide us. It's important to commit all things to Him as well. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. This includes your life, your family, your money, your possessions, etc. Be sure that there are no idols in your life. Nothing before God. God is number one. God wants to guide you even today. That's a truth, and we need to commit all things to Him. You know that you're unique. God's given you gifts. He's given you talents. He's given you passions and abilities that He is able to bless you through. So use these things to glorify Him. Regarding calling, most refer to a specific vocation or career, and I'll discuss that in full. However, I'll also mention here that God has called you to know Him. We're commanded to believe in Jesus. See that in 1 John. We're also called to follow Him, to live with the power of the Holy Spirit. And when the Bible mentioned many are called, but few are chosen, don't run from the calling of God. We need to know Jesus first. So don't deny Him. Don't grieve the Spirit. Come to know Jesus. Even today, what is one of the Holy Spirit's major purposes? Well, it's to guide you into all truth. We see that from John chapter 16, verse 13. He guides you into all truth. God is out for your best and to guide you into truth. So remember that. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Jesus promised that the Father would send the Holy Spirit and that He would teach believers and remind them of His words. And as Paul mentions, the Holy Spirit indwells all believers. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells within you? And He does. He dwells within believers. So, uh, Also, are you living a life that glorifies God? So not only do you have the Spirit of God, but is your life showing it? Are you exuding 
the, the, the Holy Spirit? I mean, are you showing others that you're a believer and that Jesus is alive? Ephesians 4 talks about how we need to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which we have been called. So let's honor God. Let's walk in a manner worthy of the calling we've received. Maybe I should just pray now over this matter. I'll take a little bit of a break here. If you have not committed your life to Jesus, or if you have strayed from him, or you haven't kept filled with the Holy Spirit, we're to be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's cover this now since it's of utmost importance, and afterwards we'll continue. So feel free to pray along if your heart agrees. Father, I commit my life to you. I have sinned against you, but forgive me. I repent and I flee from my sin. Help me stand strong against it. I believe in your son and that he died in my place. He took on my sin and you showed you accepted this sacrifice by raising him from the dead. I accept Jesus' sacrifice. Thank you for sending Jesus to take on my sin, Father. I will walk with you in purity. Guide me into your truth and fill me with your Holy Spirit to overflowing. Empower me for living a holy and pleasing life before you and fill me with your love. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And amen, so be it. That's one, it's so important. I mean, how are we going to walk in the Holy Spirit's leading if we're grieving him and without his guidance? And how can we expect to go faithfully on the path that God desires for us without him? So, all right, commit your way to him. That's important. So let's continue now. What are some tangible things you can do in discernment? Well, first, know the Word. It's huge, knowing the Word of God. Many times, and I would say in the vast majority of situations, God will give you something basic to do that is supported by His Word. For example, if He puts it on your heart to give to the poor or to share Jesus with someone else, or not to repay evil for evil, then most definitely obey His Word. If it is not within the line of grace or in line with His Word, then don't do it. In many of life's situations, God has already shown us what to do. And so we need to follow, follow through, be doers of the word and not just hearers. And hey, if we love Jesus, we'll keep his commandments. Very important. And his commandments are for our, for our own good and for our blessing. I'm reminded of Isaiah chapter 48 and verses 17 and 18. It says, Thus says the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. Oh, that you had heeded my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. So God desires us to follow his commands and they're for our benefit. He desires to give us that peace and that blessing and righteousness, holiness, purity of life. And so if we love Jesus, again, keep his commandments. It's worth it and it's for our benefit. Another thing to do, we need to pray. We need to ask God to guide us and to give us discernment regarding calling and it's something we're commanded to do. We're commanded to pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean to lock yourself in a closet and not be involved in anything. It's always to be in a state of prayer and our heart needs to be toward God at all times. If your heart is to serve God, don't worry or fear. That's important as well. Don't worry. We're not called to be anxious people or in in fear. God has given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And God wants to guide you. So commit all things to him. Listen for his guidance and don't fear. Also ask for others you trust and who encourage you spiritually to pray with you through this time. Uh, The body of Christ is meant to uplift and support each other, so let's do that. And if someone uh, you know is going through this process of discerning the will of God, support them and pray for them and and let them know that uh, you as a brother or sister in Christ really support that and that it's a great endeavor to follow after God. Another thing tied with prayer is fasting. I'm convinced that fasting is one of the most neglected spiritual disciplines today. So whether it's giving up food or something else that's distracting you from growing spiritually, give something up and spend that related time in prayer, the word, and seeking God. It's huge. It's a powerful time. Also, get away. Our lives today are full of so many distractions. We are such a busy people, but busy often results in joylessness, frustration, and callousness. I'm reminded of Mary and Martha. Sometimes we're like Martha. We're doing all the, all the chores and being busy. And while that's, that's great, sometimes we need to sit at Jesus' feet and just enjoy him and spend time with him. So take some time away to spend with God, like a spiritual retreat. Jesus frequently went and prayed alone when it was early, when no one else is awake. So find a time that works with you, whether uh, it's really early. Sometimes uh, you are free from the distractions that come from the daily grind. Uh, If you're a night owl and you can focus late at night, some of you can. It's something where you can spend time with God and and really be fruitful. But fruitfulness is a key thing here. Whatever uh, leads you to focus on God the best. 
When are you least distracted? It's a key question there. But hey, get away. <laughs> Another thing, look, look at where you are now. Has God put you in a specific place to be used where you are? So essentially where you're planted, you can also blossom and flourish. Calling doesn't always require that you have to go elsewhere, but sometimes it does. That's always uh, worth, worth weighing as well. For example, if God has given you a spouse, it is your duty to be faithful to your vows before your spouse and God. And if you're going through trouble in your marriage, and you're thinking, well, God doesn't want me to be miserable, so I'm just going to leave. That's not the case. God has called you to be faithful. And even so in Malachi, it says God hates divorce. He wants you to push through. It's an image of Christ and his bride, the church. And at, by all means, try to preserve that marriage. And hey, if you're called to, uh, called to something specific, I believe he wants you and your spouse to go if you're still married. So um, consider that as well. Be faithful and loving. And uh, that's true in a marriage as well as just two others. We need to love one another. And considering calling, uh, if you're married to a believing spouse, it's also a good idea to include that spouse in prayer uh, over that matter. It's important. You all are one spiritually as well. And so it's, it's a means to uh, unity to pray over that. Sometimes calling us to a certain task or for a specific season. It could be short-term or long-term. It doesn't have to be a fully long-term, lifetime thing. Sometimes God calls you to do specific things. So just be sure to follow through and obey and listen. Listen for his voice. So another thing you can do, as well as look where you are, consider who you are now. God has given you specific gifts. Evaluate your spiritual gifts. This can be done with a spiritual gifts inventory. And what that is is essentially a summary of various chapters of Scripture that discuss gifts that God gives us. And God gives us at least one, not limited to one, but sometimes it's a mix of gifts and we're unique. And God has put us in specific situations in which we can reach others uniquely. And so in our sphere of influences, let's be faithful to God. Um, through discernment, you can take a spiritual gifts inventory. That's just another way of uh, discerning uh, what gifts God has given you. You can ask, also ask, the, uh, dis ask others who know you really well. Uh, as to what gifts they think God has gifted you with. And you can test those. You need to test those things. For example, if you take a spiritual gifts inventory or you ask someone and you get an unexpected result or an answer, uh, for example, you take an inventory and you're gifted in administration and you never knew that and uh, you want to test that out, try something out within that gifting and see how God leads you and how you do in that. And if you fail the first time, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it's a no on that one. But hey, maybe it's something that can develop as well. Uh, at other times, you can test something out and see this is clearly not working. It's not what I want to do. I'm going to burn out like crazy. So don't do those things. And really try to discern what God has gifted you in, where your passions are, and what would lead you to just enjoy God and promote his kingdom best and bring him the most glory. I'll point you to several chapters of scripture relating to spiritual gifts. And these are huge. So read through these. It's important. Romans chapter 12 1 Corinthians chapter 12 uh, through 14, a chapter is 12 through 14. Uh, 12 covers a list of various gifts. 13, the root of all gifts, love, it needs to be done in love. And chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians uh, discusses various guidelines for tongues and prophecy. You can also look to uh, Ephesians 4. Uh, but again, all these things are rooted in love and for the purpose of the, the building up of the body of Christ. Ephesians 4 uh, also talks about various offices of ministry. So all those chapters, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians chapters 12 through 14, and Ephesians 4 are huge. Uh, you can also look to 1 Peter chapter 4 on some guidelines as well. But yeah, those are the huge chapters uh, on giftings. So take some time and prayerfully consider what the Lord has for you to use for his kingdom. That's uh, very important. Evaluate where God has put desires on your heart. That's another thing. Sometimes God will call us to a specific region or a people group or to a specific task or a goal. Has God done that in your life? Uh, this is definitely worth considering in your calling. Uh, another thing with that, if God has put, put some location on your heart and you think you're called to a certain region, surround yourself uh, with various things related. So put yourself around things you may think he is leading you to. Uh, so note your response as well during that time. For example, if you think God is calling you to missions in Russia, immerse yourself in things relating to Russia or even go on a short-term missions trip to Russia. God often speaks to us as we serve him. That's important to note. So keep your eyes and ears open. I think that's the, the common denominator of this whole thing. Keep your eyes and ears open for God's leading. But I will reiterate this as well. Listen. Often in prayer, we simply talk to God about all the frustrations we have, 
we ask him for things and we never give him a, an open ear to speak. God spoke to Elijah in a still small voice and in various situations, the Holy Spirit will guide you through this and he'll give you real direction. Anything from God will line up with what he has already spoken and according to his character. So again, knowing the word is extremely, extremely important. Remember what Satan did? He twisted scripture just even just a little bit, but Jesus knew the word and he was a express word of God, the revelation of God the Father and the Son of God. And he knew the word and we are to model that. He's also our example. So let's know the word of God. Let's study it diligently, being approved workmen for his kingdom. The word says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So know the word. Another thing, I want to caution you on this one, but sometimes you will see needs around you that need to be met. And so calling by need, often God will have you do those things, but be certain, be certain. I want to caution you about this, that God is calling you to do certain things. We can operate outside of our calling, which can cause us frustration, stress, burnout, or even confusion. God's call in our lives does require us to do difficult things. And in many cases, even if we're operating directly according to his will, we're going to go through frustration. That's a part of being in this fallen world. Not everything's going to work out perfectly. We're going to work by the sweat of our brow. But hey, if you're a piano player and you're being asked to construct a bridge, I would be cautious about taking that on. So measure that. Sometimes God will have you do those things that need to be done, kind of an emergency type of thing, or someone needs to step into a certain role. But hey, God will reward you for your heart for him. But hey, it's, it's wise to operate within your giftings. Also, I would encourage you to write or to make a memorial to, uh, to God's works and his provision in your life. So have a journal, for example, so you can write how God is leading you so you can record what he is saying to your spirit and so you can revisit those things in times of frustration or confusion. I think of so many times in the Old Testament, there are memorials set up to God and his provision, names given to God through that, wells were set up, stones were built up as a memorial, an altar was built, all to commemorate things that God has done in those people's lives and so that they could remember and that future generations could remember the goodness of God, even to previous generations. God's goodness is to us and to many generations. And so we, we can praise him for being a good and gracious God. If you're going through a valley when things seem at their worst or most uncertain, know that the Lord is our shepherd and he will lead you through any valley. And again, through those hard times, think back on how God has been faithful and gracious to you. Remember those things. And so if you have a journal or you record things, uh, whatever it is, if you set up some kind of memorial, remembering what God has done for you. Don't worship that as an idol. That's, that's also a sin. But do something, write it down, and record this is a memory of what God has done, and use that to praise the Almighty God. And that will help. So most importantly, I think to uh, finally put a bottom line to this, we must know his voice. They follow him because they know his voice, and a stranger they simply will not follow, but will flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. And so we need to know the voice of our shepherd, Jesus. Take some time, discern, know the word, study the word. If you want prayer on the matter and discernment and even a specific calling, maybe God is calling you to missions or to be a pastor. Uh, hey, God calls you to business. God calls you to various things. It's not just ministry, but we can use our gifts in the real common secular world to glorify him. And so if you're not in ministry, that, that really means nothing to me and it shouldn't mean anything to you because your ministry is where you're at. And so if you're working, you're doing all things to his glory and you're sharing Jesus with the world around you. And that can be huge. And I pray that's a real blessing and that's multiplied to you who are working, supporting your family, that's honoring to God. And so I just pray a, a blessing on you. And if you're saving up for that too, if you're saving up for whatever is in the future or just being wise with, with good stewardship, amen, God bless you. And so uh, I just pray a blessing on that. But hey, okay, if you want a uh, prayer on the matter of discernment of God's will for your life, uh, just send a message here uh, or on our website. We get that more quickly actually uh, via our website prayer form across allegiance.org slash contact.html. But I pray that you can walk in clarity in what God has for you to do. And I really mean that. I really want you to walk in clarity and in and, and true hope 
of knowing that God desires you to know him better, to do uh, all things to his glory, and to be confident and, and blessed in, in your walk in life. Uh, so whether it's immediate or long term, uh, I just pray that you continually grow to know him and hear his voice more fully. So let's know his voice. God bless you, and hey, let's close in prayer. Father, bless the viewer for watching to this point. I pray for clarity and peace in all the viewers' lives. Help them know you and hear your voice more clearly. We want to know your voice even more clearly, Jesus. Let them be guided by your spirit and walk in your truth. I pray that you put your desires for their lives on their hearts even now. And I pray for their encouragement to follow those dreams. I pray that you would put them in places where they will flourish, where they will be encouraged. And I pray against any discouragement in Jesus' name. Help them discern, Father, your will for their lives and the gifts you have given them. I pray that you grant them power through your Holy Spirit, and that you really bless them and just prosper them in your gifts and let them honor and glorify you in all they do. I pray all this, Lord. Thank you so much for being a God who cares and loves us. And Lord, we love you. Uh, grow that love and grow our relationship. I pray all this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And I just want to encourage you with this final verse as you, as you go and you discern God's will for your life. It's 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 24. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. And I pray that God brings to pass his perfect will for your life, and that you enjoy him and walk in the joy of the Lord all the days of your life. God bless you, and go in peace.